The waves are gonna be coming in hard today. We've got the big board out. We're ready to go. Let's get crying. Let's get going. What's cooling with you guys? I hope you're having a dope filing day as we've got the big board. It's gonna get serious today. We've got 187 prospects, I believe, to go over. Not gonna go through every one. We're gonna be very, very generalized with this. If you do wanna see kind of all my breakdowns on these, I do have in the, the playlist. But again, I don't wanna make you go through all those videos. They're too long and probably too boring. So. Let's get into the big board. Just see where I'm at rankings wise. Everybody has their own rankings. It's always fun to see. I love going through different big boards and taking a look like, yo, where do you got this player? Where's uh, Drake May or where's uh, George Travis or whatever player, Shadar Sanders. We're gonna get into those guys. Once again, these are all the players that I have scouted so far for the 2024 draft. A lot of these guys aren't gonna come out too. It's still way too early, but here it is. The big board has arrived. Starting number one. Oh my gosh, Caleb Williams, you crazy. No, man, actually, you know what? It could be crazy because I think Marvin Harrison easily could win that title of being the best player in this draft too. Just Caleb Williams, positional value in combination that Caleb Williams is amazing as well. Like both of those guys, you can't go wrong. They're really, really good, right? If you're picking one or two in the draft, you're getting a stud at the top. Brock Bowers, really, really good. Once again, comes into positional value. Where do you put that tight end position? You need to schematically say to yourself, hey, we have to use a tight end if we're going to draft Brock Bowers in the top 10 even because of that, right? We want to make sure we involve him. But if you involve him like you do receivers and get him in those unique situations, he doesn't even need to get in a unique situation. You don't need to scheme up Brock Bowers, but some teams, they don't, you know, they block their tight ends rather than use them as receivers. You want Brock Bowers as a receiver. It's not that he can't block. Joel, number four. So, I mean, for me, some people are going to say Joel, not strong enough. He doesn't quite have the uh, the foot speed that, you know, Olu Fashanu, who's number six on my board, has. At the same time, for me, Joel, I know what I'm getting. I feel like I'm getting a eight to 10 year NFL tackle that's going to be a plus top 25 guy. He's a great technician through and through. He's just a good player. He's a good football player. And at the end of the day, I'm willing to bank on those type of guys, right? And I'm okay if I have to spend a top five pick on that because the insurance of getting a guy that's going to protect our blind side, or even if you got two or a left-handed quarterback, just getting good offensive linemen. Jared versus a stud, coming off the edge with that burst and speed and strength profile. He's, a, he's an absolute terror. And if you need an edge rusher, I don't think he compares to quite some of the top end edge rushers of Miles Garrett and all those guys, but you know, even Nick Bosa's and stuff like that. But he's really, really good. And you know you're getting a guy that if nothing else is going to be a productive 7-8 sack dude pressure type of type of uh, guy that you really could use in any team like, you know, anybody like Arizona, et cetera, multiple teams, Rams are going to need a guy like this. Olu Fashano, as we were saying earlier, Fashano's a beast. I, I think some, you know, clean up some technical refinements to his game. But you look at overall his game, his foot speed, he could be an elite. The way he moves and, and, and whatnot, it's just, it's a it's different, right? For a 300-plus pound man, he's unbelievable. He's got all the tools, all the traits to be a phenomenal tackle in the league. And that's why I think that he's going to probably end up going higher than Joel. But I do think Joel's a little bit further along. Kalen King, Cooley, and McKistry are back-to-back -back for me. And this was a really, really tough one. I do like Kalen King a little bit more right now. I think McKistry has more upside, especially with his length. And I mean, I don't think he's the longest corner in the world, but I think he's got all the traits to be that high-end number one corner in the NFL with his vertical speed. Kalen King, I think, has a little bit more shiftiness, a little bit more movability. I think he's a little bit more scheme diverse. However, McKistry, with that length that he provides a little bit more of that prototypical six foot one type of uh, build that, that maybe, you know, more of that outside boundary corner that Kalen King can't do that. But I think McKistry gives you that more of going up against some of those bigger body receivers. So it's really tough. It depends on what you want schematically, all those things with the cornerback position. I just like Kalen King a little bit more. Leatu, 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 Latu, love Leatu. He is so good. There's just not much to say. He, he knows how to get after the quarterback consistently. His pressure He's constant, right? He wins with his hands. He knows how to get off blocks and get after the quarterback. He uses pass rush plan at the highest level of any pass rusher in this draft class. That's just what he does. He's not the strongest guy. He's not as strong as Jared Verse. He needs to get a little stronger. He's got good lateral agility. I wouldn't call him an explosive guy or, you know, super bendy. And, you know, Jared Verse is not super bendy, but extremely, extremely good at getting after the passer. 
Jordan Travis, the big shock in this top 10. You're like, Jordan Travis, you are high on something, right? Look, I love Jordan Travis. I'm a huge fan of his. So I'm a fanboy. This is a little bit of a biased one. But hey, everybody's got their player. This is probably my favorite player in college football to watch. I'll just say that right now. I love watching Jordan Travis. It was the one game where I'm like, yo, I'm stopping what I'm doing and I'm watching this, right? I watch a lot of games on film, you know, do a barrel roll and all these people come out with, with tape highlights. I watch a lot of that. But this was the one game I just sat down and I watched because I love Jordan Travis. I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah, the decision making, especially in the second quarter in the LSU game. And you look back into his history. Uh, I've watched like eight games of his, nine, ten games even, you know, including, you know, prior years. Travis is such a fun player to watch. And I, I, I really like his accuracy for the most part. I think his decision making has gotten better. He's gotten better overall as a passer. So I like what I'm seeing. Even if he ends up seeing a second round pick, which probably more ideally where he ends up going in the second round, let him develop behind maybe a veteran quarterback and then takes over like a Jalen Hurts sort of situation. I think that is his upside. Then we go on here, you got Drake May. I like Drake May still, okay? This is not a vindication on, on how I think Drake May is. It's just a vindication of other players, and I think that there are a lot of good, talented guys. Drake May, I think that he continues to clean up the decision-making and kind of the accuracy. Sometimes he has some accuracy woes, right? But you see what he can do on the move. He's got, the, he's got running ability, of course. He can take off in space. He's not as... Uh, loose of an athlete as like someone like um, like Jordan Travis or Caleb Williams, right? I think he's a little bit more stiff. He's not going to break out of sacks as much as those guys, but he definitely can get out in space. And we know Drake Maya, he he's going to be a top pick in this draft, and he's got all those tools. Uh, Mecca Buka, self-explanatory, really good route runner. He's Ohio State. Sorry, he's got in the helmet. No, he's not. He, he's good. He's in his own right. He's good. Cooper Jean, really like Cooper Jean. Really good tape. I mean, there's just... He's got some of the best tape in this draft, especially at the cornerback position. And if you want to make the argument he has the best tape out of any one of these corners, I'm, I'm on board with that. DeGene has really, really good tape, good foot speed, and his long speed's there. He doesn't have the uh, change of direction, especially man-to-man -man on the outside. I think he's going to be more of a slot corner slash safety at the next level. J.C. Latham, love his strength. He's a road grader in the run game. I think he has a huge hop step. He needs to continue to work on his balance, gets a little top heavy at times, but I really like Latham. I, I do, and I think he's going to be a good Alabama. I know Alabama tackle is getting a little harsh there, but I think he's going to be good. Uh, Dallas Turner, it's just the tool. It's the tools. It's the traits. I think his pass rush plan has a long way to go, and he's going to need to work on that this season to like really solidify this top 15 rank that I gave him because strictly off the tape right now, I would say he's more of the back end of the first round, even a round two sort of prospect but the traits are just elite not to take him early in the draft Jerzon Newton he's one of those guys where he's just a really safe prospect in this class like you, you know you're getting a good player he just doesn't have the high-end tools uh Shador Sanders will he come out this year who knows but if he keeps playing like he did uh he's coming out right I mean that TCU game put him on the map similar to like Anthony Richardson last season and even in a bigger way I feel like with Shador Sanders you got prime time you know the bloodlines He's going to be one of the most fun players to watch in college football. And I feel like he improved his release a lot, too, this season, which was huge. His mechanics look way better. And his deep ball looked better, too. I mean, it still has an improvement to go, but I feel like he, he looked better in that department, at least in one game. Amarius Mims, tackle, tons of potential once again. Just really sloppy footwork, sloppy technically right now. Once you know he improves that, he could be a top 10 pick with those traits, elite traits. Tyler Newbin, love his tape. He's another one of those guys where he's going to be a really safe prospect. If you want a good safety, Tyler Newbin's your guy. There's just not many kinks in this game. He's not your man-to-man -man coverage guy. He's not like that type of loose guy. But pure tackler uh, instincts, unbelievable. Mwah! You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. He puts a, you know puts all those things in the, in the right places. Malik Neighbors. He can be my neighbor. I like Malik Neighbors. Tons of talent here. Good speed. He's got good contested, contested catch ability in my view. Like I, I feel bad for him. Like, I want Nussmeyer to come in there because I feel like he'd help him out his draft stock. I'm not saying Jaden Dan is a bad player or nothing, but I, I feel like Nussmeyer would really help out neighbors a ton. Uh, I love his ball skills, though. We go on to these the next rankings here, this next group. Nate Wiggins, as we get into like that back, first end of, or back end of the first round. Nate Wiggins, another guy, uber amounts of potential, needs to get stronger though still, needs to get better with those missed tackles because he just, 
kind of defenders can fly off him. He's not strong enough. Keon Coleman putting statement out. I mean, he's already throwing everything out there with the contested catch ability. And he showed some yak ability too in that game. Still want to see him a little bit better as a route runner. That's my one knock on him. Leonard Taylor getting after the quarterback. That's going to be his game. Want to see him fill more of a full-time role this season. Cam Kitchens. Clean him some of those back end, maybe woes from here and there, but he is unbelievable at making plays. And overall, he processes the back end at a really high level. Uh, you got Mason Smith, tons of talent, tons of upside. Needs to get better at block shedding, utilizing those traits, right? Because he's like this, I'm an offensive lineman. No, you're a defensive lineman. Get off the offensive lineman, get after the quarterback. Chop, chop, chop. Needs to also improve his consistency getting off tackles. The Ohio State game in particular last year was really, really bad tape. If he can improve upon that, be more consistent, he has potential to be a top 15 pick. Blake Corum, stud running back. He looks back to, he looks fully healthy for the most part, right? He looks really, really good after the ACL. Uh, so all those things combined. Blake Corum with the receiving capability. He's a really, really good running back. Just Sure thing, you know what I mean? But Braylon Trice from Washington, edge rusher. Could also play D-end a little bit too in the NFL. I think he can move inside out. But edge rusher, strong sort of mold. Gives you that ability with that power off the edge. Good pass rusher. Knows how to utilize his tools. Maybe not elite traits. Doesn't have the elite bend, but a really good player. Another dude where I'm just banking on a floor guy. Barrett Carter, he's elite traits, elite, elite traits. He's one of those guys where you buy into because of those elite traits. And I feel better about Barrett Carter than someone like Isaiah Simmons. I'd say Isaiah Simmons was a bad prospect coming out. Of course, he was really good. But Barrett Carter has better linebacking traits in my view. He can hold up at the line of scrimmage, which is something we didn't see from Isaiah Simmons. And that's why I feel a lot more confident with Barrett Carter because I do think he can hold up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and he can play in the slot too. Like this dude can go up against twitchier guys in the slot and hang his, you know, hold his own. You got JT2 Amolau. Need to see more consistency with him with his explosiveness off the line, right? Getting to uh, the quarterback quicker and more consistently. That's definitely a big thing with JT, but definitely the size profile is there. The pedigree, all those things, the pass rush ability, no doubt he has all those tools. And then we get on to more of the second round type of guys, back in first, second round. Max Melton, I love Max Melton. He's a my guy in this draft class. I love his butteriness. He reminds me so much of like a Devin Witherspoon in terms of his type of speed. He's got that explosive gear coming downhill, just insane. And then we got Xavier Worthy, speed, speed, speed. Let's get some more better change of, or um, let's change speed, right? That's what he needs to work on his route tempo. Michael Penix Jr., just got to stay healthy, man. And sometimes he has some occasional decision-making woes, but I love Michael Penix and his, you know, left arm Michael Vick zip. Graham Barton, he's a G because he is a G, right? I mean, I put him as a G. He's playing tackle, but I think he's going to be a better guard with his getting him in space, running dudes over. His run-blocking game prowess is unbelievable. It's really fun to tape to watch. Trey Benson, uh, I like Benson a ton as, I mean, he just breaks every tackle. I mean, that's what he does. He's just going to get off you type of guy. He, it, receiving game needs to be something we need to see a little more of him and also maybe just more of a sample size. Blake Fisher, another really, really solid player. To me, he gives me like, my, in terms of what I did last year with Darnell Wright, he was in the same ranking mold. Like, I feel like they could both be that type of riser, just like Blake Fisher. He's a, he's a technician, you know what I mean? Uh, J uh, Jamin Dumas Johnson, Love, 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 love Jamin Dumas Johnson. Another one of those kind of like my guys. He gives me those Nicobe Dean vibes. So Jamin Dumas Johnson, really, really solid play recognition. I think he can continue to get better in zone coverage feel. Once again, he plans up being a spy a ton for them. McKinley Jackson, high end stints with McKinley Jackson. If you look at some of his highlight tape, you're like, whoa. Consistently too, he's not bad. Has to continue to work on his block shed consistency right there'll be times where he just kind of gets taken out doesn't get to that second move but he's got that quickness that you don't expect from mckinley jackson and that swim move like a la you know uh you, you could even i mean i wouldn't go as far as saying jalen carter but he's got a little bit of that to his game i would say you know like that short area burst nowhere near as quick overall but you got terry and arnold one of these dudes i also really like i kind of he's better on in breaking routes even at times than kool-aid mckistry you get him on some slants, he's going to take those things away. He's really aggressive on in-breaking routes. And he's got better hips, too, than Kool-Aid McKistry, staying on those slants, staying sticky in coverage. 
Um, just some overall feel. I don't think he has the uh, vertical plane ability that the Kool-Aid has at the moment. Je uh, you got um, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., really solid prospect. Uh, I did not see the North Carolina game on defense just yet. I know he statistically led up like 70 yards in coverage. I'll have to go take a look at that. But good linebacker. I'm not super worried about it at the moment. Well, I'll make adjustments once again if, if the time comes. Uh, Donovan Jackson, I love his floor. I think he's got great foot speed. He's got a lot of technical refinement stuff he needs to work on. But as a one-year starter, going into his second full year. And I just noticed we have Ohio State taking over the board here. <laughs> this is the spy right here. Tommy Eichenberg, the Jack Campbell vibes. A lot of similarities to his game. Really good linebacker. Travion Henderson. Expect him, if he stays healthy, to be in competition to be one of the best running backs in college football this year. Tully Lee Williams, lots of potential. He has a he's a good run defender right now. Continue to get better as a pass rusher. Really like his game. You got Denzel Burr. I haven't watched the IU game, but he did have two bass breakups in that one. So excited to see the tape on how Denzel Burke is. And if he can bounce back this year and get back to where he was a trajectory-wise freshman year. Because he's got all the tools. Like, he could be an elite corner. And I easily see this guy rising up into the first round with a good year because he has all the traits. Just need to continue to get a little stronger, especially in run support. But you talk about the man-to-man -man ability that Denzel Burke offers. It's all there. Uh, and what a great name, too, for a corner. Denzel Burke? I mean, I love that name. Burke is so cool. I don't know why, but KJ Jefferson. Whew, watch out for KJ, man. KJ gonna be flying out of here. I am a huge fan of KJ Jefferson. Look, I, I almost say you could take this guy at the back end of the first round, and he gives you some of those Cam Newton vibes, right? And I see him as a dude that he's not gonna be for every scheme, so that also is gonna be a, a play for some specific teams. Overall, though, Jefferson's a guy I'm really excited about this season. Kingsley Suomatea, I like him better as a guard early on. He's another guy that didn't seem comfortable on an, on an island at tackle. But this is another year for him to get better overall improvement. Technically, we're fine. Cooper Beebe, really solid prospect. He's in that you know mold of, of a lot of Kansas State guys going back with Reisner and et cetera with these offensive linemen. Really solid prospect. I don't think he's got the elite traits, though, and that's why I don't think he's a first-rounder. Lad McConkie. Great name as well, Lad McConkey. He's a he gives me Cooper Cup vibes. He doesn't have quite the maybe the contested catch ability that Cooper has, but you talk about good route runner, uh, great yak ability. He's tough in space. I mean, the dude is a really really good blocker too. Chris Jenkins, interior defense lineman from Michigan, another Wolverine this season. And he's got good athleticism. I heard he's put on a little bit more weight, more muscle mass. He didn't have an ounce of body fat, it seemed like, on him. Great athlete, as I talk about. Needs to get better as a pass rusher, but a really good run defender. So a lot of promise there with Chris Jenkins. Then we go on to Caden Bullock, uber athletic safety. Got the height, got the length. Uh, just want to see more consistency with Bullock in the back end. Sometimes he also grabbed a little bit. Jason Marshall Jr., Another one of those guys, I, I did see the 70-yard let up. I wasn't all on him, but he wasn't man coverage, did get beat. A small pro. going back to the tape though last year, I like the upside with Jason Marshall. I think he can be that true outside lockdown corner. Like him more maybe in a zone coverage scheme. Samil Monda Jr., super athletic. He may go above all these guys because he does have those Quay Walker vibes. And I actually like him better than Quay Walker right now. I, I feel like his instincts are more online than Quay Walker's were. Moose Muhammad, a player that I'm absolutely in love with as well. Uh, he's a really, really good player. I feel like slot receiver-wise, you take him at the back end of the second, third round, you're getting yourself a really, really good receiver. If nothing else, like a Juju Smith-Schuster type. Overall, really good. Great hands. Uh, Tyler Davis, another one of those dudes. It's just like really floor guy. You're getting a good player. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just not much to say. I don't think he has the high end traits, but he's a good run defender and he's a good pass rusher. He's going to provide both to that defensive line for you. Quinn Ewers, we're getting into projection now with quarterbacks. Quinn Ewers, lots of upside. Riley Leonard, 58, lots of upside. And it seems like Riley Leonard, every single game breaks off like a 50 yard run. It's wild. He gives me Daniel Jones vibes. It's just a lot of Daniel Jones vibes with with the Riley Leonard. Uh, Quinn Ewers doesn't have that breakaway. You don't see his athletic ability, but you see the zip and the arm talent, like just unbelievable arm talent. His decision making sometimes, you know, it's not terrible. The big thing is accuracy with Quinn Ewers. That's what has to improve. Uh, Rome Odunze, really solid receiver. I don't think he's an elite receiver at the next level, but you're getting like a, a seven to 
800 yard type of number two wide out. That's what I see from Romo, Romo Dunze, good enough athlete. He's got a good size profile, maybe like a Marvin Jones type in your offense. Uh, Rocket Sanders, he's a rocket out there and a really good running back. Someone that I think he can take the workload and I think he's got good receiving prowess too. Jatavian Sanders, solid tight end. I love his athleticism. He's not your uber lose guy. I think his route running still needs to improve, work on the footwork, but definitely the athleticism profile. It's all there to be a yak monster. And then we get into Makai Wingo from LSU. Really good explosiveness off the, off the line. Going to be a great uh, penetrating defensive tackle. Get him on stunts and stuff like that. He's going to be really, really dangerous. J.J. McCarthy. Another guy where there's a projection to be made. If McCarthy can take that next step, he can definitely uh, sling it there. I don't know why. QBR. What are we talking about? QBR ratings? No. QBR, a little bit of a typo there. But yeah, we'll see if he can reach that upside, continue to improve his decision-making overall this season. Zach Zinter from Michigan, another Wolverine. We've got a couple of Wolverines out here. Zinter, really solid offensive lineman. Continue to work on his leverage and pass protection. Got to get a little lower sink, get more power consistency. But his run blocking angles are some of the best in this draft. Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. Really like his game a lot. Just recently watched him. Really, really a lot of upside here with Guyton. I think there is potential where he could work. And I don't think he's got insane upside. I don't know if his foot speed is, is unbelievable. But I think he's already moving along as a young player. Josh Newton from Fig Newtons. But Josh Newton from TCU. Now the guy where... Does he have the elite athleticism? I'm not sure, but he's really sticky in coverage, and I think his tape is, is really solid. I have not studied him specifically from the Colorado game, so that will be something I need to, to watch. I have watched the Colorado game, but I didn't specifically watch Newton. Cedric Van Pran, a good center. I think he's the top center, at least for the moment right now. Some will argue Zach Frazier, or I like Gus Hardwick. You got Drew Newton, who I think is more of a later round guy, but a good player. Uh, Cedric Van Pran, though, definitely I think has the most upside in this class. You could argue Bryce Foster has a lot of upside too, but Cedric Van Pran, a lot of power. I think he gets over on his toes way too much. Forward leaning, needs to work on that. Mike Sarenstall from Sarenstall from Michigan, the Wolverine, who plays slot corner, really love his twitchiness. He can go up against some of the twitchier guys. He's feisty, man, even despite his size. Really, he's a great slot corner. I, and this is, you know, a vindicate or like a indication of how I feel on Sanders still. He is so good as a slot corner that I think you're, you can take him in the second round. Really good player. Uh, Dante Colleone, uh, the godfather. Watch out. I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. He's going to make you an offer you can't refuse. He is like, you know, Siaki Inca got a lot of those nose tackle vibes and got a lot of hype last year. To me, Dante Corleone was what I wanted to see. Like, he's the type of guy where he's so strong at the point of attack, but he can move from gap to gap, right? He can two gap because he has the lateral agility and the flexibility, which is so huge, especially as a nose tackle. You have to have that flexibility. The godfather here, Dante Colleone, he has that. Uh, Ruka row, 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 row your boat gently down the stream. He's going to hit you in the gap on the seams. That's really what he does, man. He is going to be that stunt dude and get after the quarterback type of guy. Bucky Urban, he's got shiftiness for days. Think Aaron Jones type of vibe. Then you get into Adissa Isaac from Penn State. It's going to be a fun group to watch this season. I like Isaac. At times, he was better, and I feel like more consistent than Chop Robinson. Really good edge rusher, man. Brandon Coleman from TCU played tackle for them. Played tackle, left tackle. He's actually playing guard this season. And I think he's got a lot of the strength profile that a lot of these gap power teams are going to be looking for. Jack Nelson, lots of upside here. Just And he kind of has those old school coming out feet vibes with him. It's kind of funny. But really, really good tackle prospect with a lot of potential, good athleticism. But a lot of technically refined stuff he's going to need with his hands. Jordan Morgan, need to see him healthy come after the season from the ACL. But he's another guy where he's got a lot of the traits you look for. Uh, just very raw, what I saw from the 2021 tape, right? But 2022, I saw one game, and it saw some improvements. Antoine Juice Wells, really good. Cedric Tillman sort of vibes. Just a good, solid, strong receiver possession, you know, extra style of guy. You got Joe Milton, cannon. Absolute cannon of an arm. If you don't know, I mean, obviously, I think everybody knows Joe Milton, 90-yard, bombing. This dude has a cannon. 
Can he be consistent with his accuracy? Can he read the field more consistently? Those are big questions for, for me. Michael Hall, lots of upside. I think he, you know, DN, D tackle, uh, good athleticism. I don't think he's as smooth of an athlete, though, as Tyleek Williams. I want to see him improve his balance this season. Braylon Allen, big, bruising type of, you know, between the tackles, old school, but he's got better speed than you would think. Orlando Gatson, a guy that I really liked a ton. I love his hands. I feel like his route running ability is really good, especially at the top of the stem. He can get by defenders in a hurry, and uh, despite his speed, he's just not the most explosive guy. Javon Bullard, whether it's safety, slot corner, he gives you that gamer mentality. I think he's got a good athlete too, just understands the game really, really well, just not a, maybe a hyper athlete. Uh, you got Telesi Fulaga from Oregon State. A lot of potential here too. I don't see him as like a top end talent because I don't know if he has the foot speed, but I think he's going to be, you know, again, a solid tackle in the NFL, at least has that potential, right? To be a, a solid starter. Don't know if he's going to be a top 25 tackle, but I think he can borderline in that department. Tate Ratledge from Georgia really liked his tape a ton, man. I thought he was really, really strong at the point of attack. His pass protection, quick enough feet to be able to get the job done. Aaron Lewis from Rutgers. Maybe doesn't come out this year, but I love his tape a ton. Consistently go watch that Rutgers take other than Max Melton. Melton and I'm uh, melting my mouth right now. <laughs> but Aaron Lewis is getting after the quarterback, whether he's playing D-end or off the edge. Naramiah Pritchett, really, really good at the line. Even better, uh, or he's good on the um, uh, off coverage too. Like I was really impressed. I felt like he was more well-rounded than DJ James. That's why I gave him the nod. But both of these guys, super feisty at the catch point, which I love. Round three guys in my eyes. Mario Williams, speedster. Gives you some uh, maybe a la Brandon Cooks vibes, something like that. I think Mario Williams is going to be a huge help for for um, Caleb Williams this season. Spencer Rattler from South Carolina. I actually kind of was really impressed with his North Carolina game, and he just limited some of those decision making issues. And if you know if he can do that, hey, I think he can be Baker Mayfield plus. DJ James, as I talked about, love the feistiness. Andrew Mukaba from uh, Clemson. He's a guy where super athletic, want to see him kind of bounce back from this past season. I know he had a lot of injuries, so let's see if Mukaba can kind of take that elevation here because he can play in the slot too. He's got really good, he's a really good athlete. Rod Moore, another dude that solid athlete. He's got good twitch to his game. I just didn't maybe see like one high, high end trait, but I didn't see him get beat a whole ton. And I thought he just really is solid. He's get a little stronger though in his run support. Did kind of have, he was more of a lower tackler than a body tackler in consistency there. Jasheen Davis, I like his tools, man, and he got after the quarterback a lot. He was getting a lot of pressure there at Wake Forest. Keep an eye on him. I think he's got some good length too to his profile and good athleticism. Kamari Lasner, he's a, he's got good vertical plane speed. I think that he still has some improvements overall as a young player that I want to see consistency wise. But he's ferocious over the middle of the field, like attacking slants and stuff like that. Junior Colshan from Michigan, a guy where I just need to see him make more plays. I know he he had a lot of plays, but I feel like in coverage he just didn't make a whole ton of plays. So making that next step will be the big stepping stone for me in terms of putting him to that day two conversation firmly, right? Uh, Johnny Wilson drops, has to improve the drops. He has the size, though, and he's pretty, you know, got some decent speed, obviously, for his size. He's a good athlete. Uh, Trevon Sweat, uh, Tavondre Sweat, pardon me, from Texas, hook him horns. He's uh, super strong, and he's got more pass rush than you would expect a big fella to have. So I really like his game, especially as a nose tackle. He's got some good flexibility, too, to be able to move in and out of gaps. So if you need a nose tackle, look no further. Warren Brenson, a lot of upside. Just needs to be more under control this season from Georgia. I like him better than Nazir Stackhouse. Then you got Kalen Carson from Wake Forest. Man, I'm telling you, Wake Forest has got some good defensive players this season. He's really aggressive. And, and that's something I think a lot of teams are going to really like from Carson. Want to see the athletic testing? That's going to be a big question for me with Carson. Michael Trigg is a guy I really like too. Tight end from Old Miss. Transfer from USC. It's too bad he didn't stay at USC, but... I love Michael Trigg, man. I know I hear there's some off field. I don't know what's going on, but Trigg is a stud of an athlete, and I really, really like Trigg if he can reach his potential. Like I think he has legit second round, even maybe even first round if he reaches his potential. I, the athleticism, it's there. I even could play receiver. I think he's got a good enough athlete to play like a big slot or even outside. I've seen him win. Will Shipley, super explosive, hitting a gap, 
really, really good running back. And, and you know, I think he could be a nice receiving back, too. I think Will Shipley's going to be a good player as he gets better blocking, too. A.D. Mitchell going to hook him, Texas hook him horns this season. Uh, can be a really, really, he's clutch receiver, man. And he's got enough wiggle and jiggle to make you slide as a corner, at, you know, being six foot four. Got a little, little stronger versus bigger corners. Uh, Christian Mahogany, got to get healthy this season, see how he looks, but has a lot of upside too as a, a strong mauler type, really good. Then we go on to Chris Braswell, some upside here at, at all at Alabama. He's got good explosiveness off the line and continue to work on that pass rush. I think he could be a nice player there in the fourth round with upside to be a day two guy. You got Bo Nix. I'm lower on Bo Nix, maybe the consensus. I'm just not there with Bo Nix. Like I, I just don't see the elevation with Bo Nix. That's my thing. I think he's a solid quarterback. I just, again, I don't see maybe that one trait. So that's just me personally. Tyron Hopper, not left guard, left, <laughs> left guard. Uh, you know, linebacker, pardon me, but he could play left guard. He's that ferocious, man. I'm just saying, Tyron Hopper. He's a blitzing, downhill, attacking linebacker. That's really what you're going to do. These blitz-heavy teams, look no further than Tyron Hopper. That's You're going to love him. Uh, Zach Frazier, Joe Frazier. Zach Frazier from Western Virginia. He was their superstar in their offensive line. Really, really like his game. I feel like if he can continue to get stronger, can play in a nice wide zone system, it doesn't matter. Cole Bishop, really smart. Safety. I don't think he's got the elite athleticism, but he's going to be a good player. Just another one of those kind of like floor guys I feel really good about. Jalen McMillan, another floor guy. Really like his game. I think he's a solid route runner. Just doesn't have the elite speed or explosiveness. Troy Franklin, he's got elite explosiveness, speed, downfield to be a deep ball winner. I just do question the the build, right? Going up against stronger corners, getting off the line. That is a big question for me. But he's a good route runner, and that's why I think he can make it despite his size. Brandon Dorless, good interior rusher. A nice, like, five-tech, four-eye. Can also play on the edge in sub-packages roles. I think he's going to be in that sort of mold. Then we got into Justin Flo, who, to me, is a guy where he fits in that big hitter. He's going to try to make a big splash play. He's not always consistent, but I think he's going to make a living in the NFL for a very long time. Really good athlete. Uh, then you got Moon, uh, Muma Injeto, pardon me with my uh, pronunciation there, Wisconsin. Great tape, man. I love his tape. Doesn't maybe have the high end athleticism. That's why he's a little bit further down the line. But I really like his tape. They've got number 54, I believe, there. Two is really good, too, uh, for them. Then we go on to Jonah Monheim from USC. Just like him as an interior player. I mean, maybe you can try him a tackle, but I like him as the interior. I think he's got some good moverability there on your offensive line. Michael Pratt from two lanes looked amazing, but uh, he gives me a lot of Bailey Zappi sort of vibes. Uh, and with him, it's just like, does he have a cannon arm? Maybe not. Does he have any one trait that's huge? He can take off and run, but he's not an elite athlete. Just a really, you know, I like him though. I think he's a good quarterback, someone I'm taking a chance on in the fourth round who may end up being a starter, right? Corey Foreman from USC, whether they play him at linebacker, off the edge, he's got crazy tools, crazy length, crazy size profile, speed, explosiveness. Just need to see his game come together. He is a total project. Darius Robinson, a bit of more of a project as well, but he's more refined than Corey Foreman, but he's an interior defensive lineman. Crazy length. Somebody's going to take a chance on this guy, and he could be a developmental dude that ends up working into a potential good, really good starter. Just needs some more development there with his pass rush tools consistency-wise and as a run defender. Uh, Patrick Paul from Houston. Houston, we have a problem. Houston, man, this guy, is he's, he's got some talent too. I'm not as high as maybe on some of these other guys like Dane Brugel with him. Uh, because I did see him kind of overset at times, and there were, there were some moments where, okay, I'm like, all right, we need to see more consistency with Patrick Paul. But I understand, like, he's got the size, the length, some good, decent enough athleticism. Not an uber athlete. Did see him get beat to the edge, too. Uh, Chris Abrams, drain, solid player. It's just the size, right? But he's really feisty for his size. Just you're looking at it. He's a good slot corner. You know, slot corners just don't seem to go that early in drafts. Benjamin Yurisek from Stanford. A uh, good player. He is a really good player. I think he's got a lot of upside, a lot of developmental upside. He had a really good game. I did not watch his first game, but I heard he had a really, really good game. So he might be a riser this season for sure. Kobe Bryant could be a riser. Good athlete. Got to build his frame. Really skinny. Uh, Christian Haynes, 
solid guard there from UConn. Uh, not much else to say. Just don't think he has the super high-end tools, athleticism. That's my only knock on him. But a really good player, man. Uh, James Williams, insane tools. Stiffness, though. That's my big concern with him. A lot of missed tackles. I feel like just a lot of stiffness, and that is a bit of a concern for me. So kind of loosen up those hips a little bit. That's a big thing for me with, the, with him going forward. Uh, Keith Randolph saw a lot of flashes, just not enough consistency there as a pass rusher. Cedric Gray, a good, solid tackler. More of a developmental guy, though, I feel like, in terms of consistency and coverage. But you look at the Miami tape, like he dominated at the beginning of that game. He was their defense. Gus Hardwick from Purdue, I like him a lot. I think he's got enough length, strength profile. He's, he's a dude that I'm watching, and I, of course, am, you know, Purdue, IU biased. Jordan Birch, strength, length, he's an edge setter. He's not explosive off the line, though. That's the only problem there. Uh, Dominique Levitt, he's explosive, got that deep speed, needs some more consistency with him, though, overall catching, you know, and uh, also uh, maybe as a route runner, too, not a great route runner right now, going to Georgia. Malachi Moore, let's see if he can bounce back this year, but I still like his tape, I think he's going to be a nice quarters coverage type of guy. Nazir Stackhouse, lower on him, because I, I don't love the twitchiness that he has in, in hitting gaps. I just didn't see a whole ton of playmaking ability there for Nazir Stackhouse. But he's super strong, and I understand why NFL scouts are liking him. Sam Hartman, heck of a start to the season. He's looked really good. I just don't think he's got the tool. It's, it's similar to situation with like Stenson Bennett. You know, really good college quarterback. Can he take that elevation? Kendall Milton, like his, he's a really good vision back, and I think he's got more power. Uh, I like him a lot, actually. He's a really good player. Ja'Cory Brooks from Alabama, solid possession style of guy. He does have some upside, too. So I think if he can continue to work on his route running, I think there's some some potential with which Ja'Cory Brooks. I like his hands. Uh, Bryce Foster, 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 got to get the R in there, but uh, R, Foster. Uh, dude needs to get healthy this season, coming back from the ACL, I believe. But he's got the strength profile to be like a Creed Humphrey type of upside, right? That's his upside, in my view. Audric Estime from uh, Notre Dame, another really solid running back. He's a you know uh, he's got some decent burst, good power. Really like his game. Solid running back. Uh, Tony Grimes just doesn't see anything elite per se. Tony Grimes, good length, decent enough speed. I feel like got torched a lot. In North Carolina moving to Texas A&M. Let's see if he can bounce back here this season. He's going to be highly looked at if he does because he's got crazy tools. Tools and plus he's I think a highly recruited guy. Roger Rosengarden, sorry if you can't quite see it there with the graphics, but Rosengarden from Washington plays right tackle for them. And I do think he can stick at right tackle. I think he's got enough length and speed to be able to do that. And I think he's got some, you know, solid starter pot uh, potential, maybe like, you know, Andrew Wiley, something like that. I don't know. Jaheim Bell, uh, going to be kind of like a, a mismatch yak type of dude with his speed and you know utilize him as a running back too just not super high on bell like i don't think he's like a day a high day two guy I don't, at least at the moment uh then you got zion tui pelotu for tui we still have missing the eye sorry my typos out here uh anyway typos what are you doing go back to english g slang i know i should i really didn't do very good i mean i was able to pass and stuff like that but going back zion tui pelotu but tui he's a explosive guy you know, got some explosive, got some twitchiness there off the edge. Uh, been dealing with some injuries. I think his run defense has really gone downhill. And his pass rush actually has gone a little bit downhill. Still a really good player, though, and is a sub-package edge rusher. Javon Foster, good technician. Just doesn't have the athleticism, I think, to be a high-end tackle. That's the only thing I worry about. But a really good tackle. I mean, he's a good swing man. And kind of like Carter Warren sort of eyes, where I think he could play in the NFL. And then we got J.J. Pigues. From Ole Miss, just one of those guys. He's one of those uh, dudes I really liked watching, kind of like a my guy. I think he's got good lateral agility. He's strong at the point of attack. He's really low center of gravity. Mayan Williams from Ohio State, uh, kind of like a bull, you know, a bowling ball, right? It can be like the C.J. Anderson type maybe. Uh, and you got um, uh, Layden Robinson from Texas A&M, who's your gap scheme power guy, right? Got to get better with his overall foot quickness and just... His tape this year has got to get better, but he's definitely got the power that NFL teams are going to covet. Uh, Jackson Dart, he was throwing some darts, and a uh, dude that has some good athleticism. Still need to see more consistency with Dart. Uh, I do worry a little bit too with schematically with things, and just overall um, speed change, you know, velocity of throws. Like uh, what I mean by that is fitting in certain windows and things like that, you know, NFL level throws. Then we got into Ricky Pearsall, receiver from Florida. 
someone who I think is going to be just a really solid player, like a Hunter Renfro type of guy, right? Just a really reliable slot receiver and someone you're going to be really happy with in the fourth, fifth round. Andre Carter going to IU this season. Let's go. I'm super excited about this. I can't wait to study this one linebacker who had a heck of a game from the Ohio State game and, and their senior linebacker this year, filling in a big shoes for Cam Jones. But Andre Carter, really, really good player uh, coming over from Western Michigan. I expect him to be their leading edge guy. I liked what I saw with his strength and enough athleticism to be able to be an impact off the edge. Dorian Singer already making an impact there at USC, coming over from Arizona. I, I, you know, not super high on him. I just didn't quite see maybe the, uh, you know, release getting off press. Some of those things going to be a bit of a question mark for me with with Dorian Singer, but he's got some good juice there to, you know, help out a team at the next level. I think he can be a nice slot receiver. Jalen Catalan going to hook him this season. He's going to be a guy that can stay healthy, right? If he stays healthy, he's going to move up the board dramatically. He's got elite tools, elite traits. I mean, are good traits, right? He is a dude that is looking to cause pain, right? He's going to come downhill. He's not afraid of nobody. It's just like, yo, got to stay healthy, right? Unfortunately, it gives me like Bob Sanders vibes. Isaiah Adams from, um, from Illinois, really solid. I just don't know if he's got elite traits, but I think he's a really, really solid offensive lineman. And I could see someone like uh, maybe like a John Runyon type of guy, just a really solid offensive lineman and can play for a team and if nothing else, be great swing depth. Uh, Brevin Span Ford, good number two tight end. Uh, can he develop into a number one guy? Yeah, maybe. I think he's 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 fine. I don't think he's an elite tight end, but I do think he can carve out a nice NFL career if nothing else is a good number two guy. Uh, Keen Mesidor, uh, your edge setter, early down run defender type of dude. And I, I like him more as like a uh, four eye interior type of player. I feel like his best reps came on the interior. I just don't think he has the explosiveness or the twitch off the edge. Now, guys who do have some explosiveness and twitch, the Murphy brothers. Grayson, Gabriel, man, I know however you want to rank these guys. Gabriel, maybe he's played more on the interior if you want to move him, you know, in and out. Uh, Grayson, Murphy, both had big games week one, but both guys where I, I, I don't know if they're strong enough really to hold up off the edge consistently, but maybe, you know, like Aquara type of production at the next level. Then we get into Legereus Henderson. Going over to Michigan, two Wolverines here and Drake Nugent, both solid offense linemen. Just with Henderson, needs to get a little stronger. Nugent, I don't know if he's got those elite traits, right? Uh, but he's a really good player. Can maybe be a Drew Dahlman type. Uh, Bryson Nesbitt, a guy who's got good elite, uh, good athleticism, really good athleticism. Needs his consistency with his hands and also route running. A little bit stiff at times. Dwight McGothern, a nice sort of press man off you know can play in those sort of vibes but he's more i'd say on one side of the field right kind of cover three cover one certain systems he's scheme dependent but he's a really feisty corner and he's one of those guys where i definitely think he could be end up being a sleeper depending on you know where he ends up going joshua gray super athletic but very raw needs to get stronger needs to get better with his technique just saw him get beat inside out consistently colby uh, connor colby another guy where has a lot of traits but very raw tape-wise, not a tackle either, really struggled on an island. Like, it was really, really bad at times, especially the Michigan game. Princely, uh, uh, mentally, uh, pardon me, I'm totally butchering this one. I gotta, I gotta look up that pronunciation again, but uh, going off the top on some of these. But Princely is a guy where I think he's got a lot of traits, but once again, those traits just have not come to fruition yet. He's very raw with his pass rush plan. I think his run defense too at times is just not quite there with his stack and shed ability. Needs to learn how to use those tools, those traits. But he does have developmental upside. Jacob Cowing from Arizona. Nice slot receiver. I actually like his tape. I thought he was really, really good. Just don't think there's like high-end, high-end upside. I think he could be a nice slot receiver though, right? And that's something I'm willing to take there in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Then you got Dwayne Carter, pass rush specialist on the interior. I just don't know if he's got the, the tools maybe uh, be, you know, NFL strength consistency wise there. We'll have to wait and see on that. David Walker, a developmental guy to keep an eye out on, small school. Someone, uh, you know, that I, I, when I did watch from him, I, I, I was really impressed. But again, going to small school, let's see. But he has a really good pass rush repertoire that he was able to win. So I think he's a guy to keep an eye on radar, definitely on an underrated watch list. 
Then we go on to uh, Quinia Mitchell from Toledo. Toledo, uh, Someone where I think is going to be zone corner, right? But really solid explosive burst downhill. And I think he's going to be a really nice zone instinctual corner for somebody to get this guy. Just want to see a little bit more with his run game ability, right? And also if he can play at the press. Just didn't play press coverage like at all. Howard Cross, good situational pass rusher. Really like his ability as pass rusher. And he's a good run defender too. So he's a dude that I think could rise with a full year of tape at Notre Dame. Brew Limmer, someone where it just wasn't quite as high on. I felt like he got beat one too many times. I don't know if he's got quite the foot speed either, but he's definitely a road grader in the run game. And I do think he's got some upside for sure uh, still. Cameron Ward. Uh, with Cameron Ward, I, I wasn't huge on Cameron Ward, but at the same time, I understand why people like him. It's just the system, what they ask, a lot of screens, a lot of simple hitches and stuff like that. Not a lot of going through reads, one half side of the field, stuff like that. So I want to see that with Cameron Ward. Fabian Lavette, good, solid player. Just didn't see any high-end tools. But a decent pass rusher, not a bad run defender. Overall, not a bad player. Good rotational player. Then you got Fentral Cypress. Uh, good length, strength. I think he can hold up there on the edge as a cover two, cover three style corner. That's really where he's going to thrive. Scheme dependent type of dude. Javian Cohen, good lateral agility. I think he can hold up for sure. But just two questions. Some of maybe the length, profile, and some stronger, twitchier guys. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, need to see the consistency with Van Dyke because it's like some games you're like, oh my goodness, this is the Tyler Van Dyke show. And then other games, oh my gosh, this is brutal to watch. Uh, Frank Gore Jr., let's go. Frank Gore Jr., he's going to be a nice, uh, I think he's going to be a nice rotational running back. And, and with his explosiveness that he provides, I mean, he's not the most explosive guy, but I think he can be a nice number two running back. I just don't know if he can really be that number one guy, carry the load for you. Xavier Truss does have some developmental upside here with Truss. I just didn't see the the um, the technical refinement right now. It, it, he's got a lot of work to go in his game, but he's a young player, and we'll see if he can develop and whatnot. Robert Scott, solid offense lineman, and from what I saw in, in week number one, he looked good. Just don't think he has like the crazy athleticism and tools to be like a you know a top starter in the NFL. We'll see though. Uh, Tesman Marshall transferring Alabama developmental linebacker. I think he's got a lot of tools, just needs to develop. Grayson McCall, a little lower on McCall. Uh, not enough tape out there either to really make that. I've only watched like three games in total on McCall, so take that with what it can be. You just don't know about the arm strength. Uh, some of the decision-making, too, for me, a question mark. Josh Proctor, solid box safety. I just didn't love his tape, but someone who gives you some nice uh, special teams and box vibes. Ty Hamilton, I think he'd be a nice interior rotational player, good run defender. Same thing with Tim Settle. I think he has some upside too. Tim Settle just didn't see enough plays, but it like he wasn't bad. You know what I mean? Like he's got some developmental upside. Uh, and, um, Andrew Ram from Oklahoma Center. Some guy, this dude has some upside as well. I think he's someone who he needs to get better in terms of his footwork. Really, really raw in that regard. But I think he's got some good athleticism, and he also can be a guy where he brings the punch, right? So if he can develop, he's a dude that can really end up being a starter down the line. Devin Leary, good backup at the NFL. I just didn't quite see it there uh, as an NFL, you know, like a top starter. Uh, Christian Jones just doesn't have the elite athletic traits there, but he's not bad at Texas. I just see him moving inside the guard, plays tackle for them. I believe right tackle. They've got a young guy, left tackle, who's going to be a monster. DeQuinn and Jackson, good number two back. I think he's going to have a really nice career. You know, he may not, you know, be a top end back, but I like some of his burst and, and ability to hit the lane and go. Just needs to work on his leverage. Finishing it up, we got a couple of guys too. Ben Coleman, I like him a lot. But he played tackle, and it was bad at tackle. Move him inside the guard. Justin Jacobs, I, I just wasn't in love with Justin Jacobs. I thought his athleticism wasn't really that high end. Maybe I watched some bad games, but I watched like three or four games of Justin Jacobs. Just wasn't super impressed. They also played him in the slot a ton, which didn't make a whole ton of sense. Maybe like playing him as like a strong side linebacker on like a 3-4 front or maybe like an inside 3-4 uh, linebacker where Oregon's probably going to play him this year. Maybe he'll look better. Clark Barrington, just an older prospect, but not a bad player. I just don't know if those NFL traits, if he has really the NFL traits that are going to step up in the next level. We'll see. And Wyatt Millam here to finish it out, Western, Western Virginia, Country Roads. 
uh, can develop. I think he can be like a Connor McDermott type developmental swing tackle. A couple of guys. Uh, now I do. I did have Moose Muhammad, so I just realized this. Uh, but I, I did forget Jack Sawyer, Troy uh, Fontenu, two guys that I, I I made a mistake and forgot. I I was kind of going back and you know with these and made some mistakes with this. So part of me, I think there's one other guy that I scouted that I missed. But Jack Sawyer, I gave. I'm giving a second, third round grade on. I want to see him play more of a traditional edge role this year for Ohio State. I think there's some upside. I think he's got decent enough athleticism. And he's a dude that I think can end up developing into a really nice edge setter, Sam Hubbard type. You got Troy Fontenot, who I need to see him better. He oversets at times, but he brings the punch. And that's another thing I love from Fontenot. He really is good at bringing the punch. He's got enough foot, foot quickness. I just see him as more of a guard, not a tackle. He plays left tackle for them. We, and that's another thing. When he's on an island, just a little bit more uncomfortable. I talked about oversets, maybe the lack of foot speed are problems. He does get beat to the edge, too. I've already talked about Moose Muhammad. Anyway, that is it here for my big board. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree. You know, it's so, so early, and I can't wait to see the risers and fallers. And we'll have to keep this updated throughout the season. I'm going to continue to hit the, the, the tapes and try to get as many prospects throughout this process. So, yeah, I want to try to get like three or 400 done. Let's go. But I hope you have a cool in one and ready for some football.